those magnificent men in their flying machines. They go up to the above, they go down to the above. Uh, I've made it, this is the bottom wing of the sock, we've put the tea or pop, if you want to call it that. Um, and basically all you do is just sew the text. Uh, I've cut, obviously I've cut it, oh, this was an off cut so I've used what you can, you know. Uh, so basically as you can see if I go further back, I've made enough to like cover both sides of the wing. And obviously in the middle it's not a problem because on this one I'm going to put the metal ca capping over the top. So I don't see the point in trying to waste a whole load more and that so they're on like that <clears throat> so you make sure you've obviously got enough area space around to do that and then the, I know it sounds silly but this is the basics of it make sure you've got a sharp scalpel blade because Solatex wears blades like lightning all right because it's fabric uh, <clears throat> a decent long pair of sharp scissors and a nice short pair to cut around sort of tricky edges okay so that's that bit so far all right the other thing is obviously you put working on one wing at a time Okay, so we'll take that out of the way for a minute. The other thing I tend to do is basically, uh, with the edges, you notice I've put like off cuts in here. I'll do that with all four angles there and on each shader on. That's basically, so when it comes to cutting it and folding it, as much as it won't really matter on this one because this is all going to be sprayed, the top part. But either way, it's standard practice, I do it. I'm sure there's people out there that do it differently, but that's how I find it easier. So when you do the cuts, cutting in, you've got it to fall over and you can't see any wood that's the basics of that okay so the other thing I tend to usually use my stand but I'm trying to video this as well so what I've got to do is because obviously this is you don't want to lean on that because it'll damage the wing so what I tend to do is get a couple of old bits blocks and then you one hand is the nightmare hang on so and then I prop it up on there so that if I do tend to lean on it or whatever then uh, I won't have a problem with breaking the wing <coughs> right okay here we go the iron I usually I usually use two irons, but uh, <coughs> we'll go with the one because most people don't have that luxury. So uh, usually these are set up at uh, 130. It states on the instructions, but I usually use it at mine at 140, 150. Depends how competent you are. Anyway, uh, and like I said before, uh, before anyone says anything, this is the way I do it, and it seems to work. So as we go, we'll go along. Right. So I usually start sort of right at the edges here. Just a quick tap on it. Okay. So. We need it. But I apologise to the camera quality, but one hand, and it's on a stand now, so we can't really do much about that. So you just tap, gently tap around the edges to get out of the creases. Okay, next, uh, it doesn't take long. So. Depending on how common you are, you can go as quick as you want, but I tend to just take my time on this. So, so you only use a hotter temperature, really, but there you go. <clears throat> I might add as well, when doing it, as I'm talking, I'm blabbing away. Right, I apologise. <laughs> Jelly. Right, so the other thing about Solar Tex is, as much as I think this is my favourite covering, it's the toughest covering I know of. Uh, I have not come across a plastic version yet to beat it. But I will say this is when you go to put decals on, the sad point of it is is that plastic like Solar Tex, Solar Film, Hobby King Film, anything plastic does not like sticking to it. It's mainly because it's a fabric, linen type fabric, and the pores in the fabric don't allow it. So it's a pain in the butt really and uh but unfortunately that's just the way it is so uh, when i come to, i will make a video of how to make the decals for this uh as you do at the right time some time keep it then i'm trying to get my hands in the way see i'm used to the gun being a lot hotter in fact yeah when you get used to your own temperature you like everything you get used to your own guns and that you know your own way of doing it and your own temperature but I mean, I've done so many of these videos now, some really so there you go. So you're just getting the trace around the edges of the wing. That's nice. Another tip is I might add <coughs> whatever you do, well I found in a way it might get probably arguing the difference again, but that's then what I find is as well is that um I never tension the whole wing up, don't you know, I never a uh, never go around the whole wing at a time. I wait. I wait until I've done both sides of the wings before I put all the tension and all that up because I think it stops at risk of wing warping it, you know. That's how I look at it anyway. I might be wrong, but it, I just think it sounds better to me to do it that way. And that way you don't have to worry. Again, a decent pair of scissors would help. <laughs> okay, that's no problem. Alright. Okay. 
it's all going to be good fun. Again, this don't matter really because it's all going to be sealed. Right, so you go like that. Let's get a nice edge on it. See, the bottom, <coughs> it depends how purist you are, but I mean, you can get this nice and round and flat there. Pull it. It's the thing about solar text, it's so easy to work with, it's unreal. It's nice. There's not a lot of give in it, I'll give you that, but it's it's just enough. Okay, so you've got that there, nice and tight there. You get it right around the edge, like so. Okay. Well, obviously, I'm doing this a bit quicker because the time, the video's got a time limit on it. Right, so on this side, you just trim off. That won't matter either because it's all just not going to be seen. So get rid of that. Now, try and lift it if I can get it on the camera. Is it still on there? Yeah. Right. Under here, as you can see, you've got a lip there as so I've run it along there. You can, if you, just in case you, like, I will, just in case you want to make it a more solid. You see it. Okay, because you've got your trip. That's the uh, on the uh, leading edge of the wing. So you've got a nice little fixture on it. So you can run your blade down it. Now obviously I can't really do this with one hand, so here yeah, you get your blade, so put it back on here. Okay, with a bit of wood it's there to hold it. And you run your blade down the edge, nice and sharp blade. Straight along, just keep it there. Using the, the blade as best you can, you get to the edge. Trim it there. Right. Okay, I might be off camera this bit, so I have to look back over. Is it on the camera? I have to keep checking that I've got it on the camera. <laughs> Same with this bit here. Again, if like for there, you're not you're not happy with it, just make another crease there. So all you gotta do is keep it nice and creased. Okay. And roll again. Right. And like so to the end. Alright, and then so yeah, that's just this. Chop away the excess. I mean, if you like me, don't throw any of this away because you'd be surprised how handy it comes with like scraps. I know it sounds tight, but believe me, it's worth it. And then once you've cut your piece, like I say there, just seal it around with the iron. Same with the front. It's a nice seal on it. Now we come to the other bit. It's the tricky bit, I suppose people say it's tricky, but. I don't think it is right. It's in the camera still. Yeah, just right now here. Well, like I showed in the previous video, I uh, put the pieces in, so it doesn't really matter where you, you cut it, the angle where you want. Because obviously, I would have turned this wing round now to do this. So obviously, you turn your wing round, but for the sake of the video, I'll have to do it this way. Right. So you just cut it to there. Okay. Not to the points, near the point. Yeah. And the same then with this, the angle there. Just cut it there. Okay, get rid of the access there. Okay, all right. Then you repeat the same here with this wing. But like I say, don't don't cut it to the right to the actual corner of the thing. So you got to have room to lap it. If that makes sense. Because if you cut it to the point, when you put the heat gun on, it's going to drag it back off the off the um, wood, and you don't want that. Okay. So now this is more or less impossible we're gonna to have to turn it around so bear with me right is that still on the camera <laughs> look at you yeah. right so now you've got this bit this is the fun bit oh, nice. track it around see how it's going nicely onto the bit you cut there you chuck it there right okay pull it up don't be scared of it because it's like I said it's got quite a lot of Given this, no give, I mean, so it's like, you know what I mean, it, it's, it just works with you. Once you get used to solar text, they always say, once you go back, you never go back, sort of thing, you know, and it's the same sort of thing with me. I much prefer this to uh, most all the coverings, it's just more fun. Right. Okay. And then you repeat the process again, you've got a nice track there, and you just go with the sharpest blade you've got, and just keep going down, pull it around. Okay, keep that as an excess bit. Right, you got that. And again, just give it a trim on the edge. Alright, now you got this one bit here, so we pull it up. See, like there, you get your blade because you've got a little corner bit there, but that's not so bad. Right, see, now I'll go in nicely. If you can see that on the camera, I'll be amazed. 
we get that in. Right, now you've got a delf there, so we need to cut that. Like so. Right. Right. A delf, what's the delf? So you got that, that's nice. Right, we'll get rid of that. So I've got to sort of put the other one. Right. So that's still fit in the like so. Okay. Right, we'll put that in like so. Okay. Right. And we'll chop this. It's still in the camera. Is it? Can't bloody see a thing yet. Then you just repeat the process again on here, because obviously you want to get a nice tracked edge. Okay. Slightly lean it over so you can see where you're edging. Dirt mark, I call it. It's like in wallpaper. See your dirt mark. You've got that there. <laughs> Jelly. And if you look, you start in the middle. Nice sharp blade. See now the blade's already starting to go blunt because, like I said earlier it's fabric and for some reason it like cutting wet paper it is oh, just blunts the blade right repeat this process okay and what I would normally say take your time but obviously I've only got a limited time on the video and then it cuts itself off so that's why it looks like I'm rushing okay so cut this process off turn it out get a track mark okay Right, we'll do some of this. Again, it needs to pull it and it's pulled. Do it upside down, doesn't it? Okay. Right. There you go. Lovely weather here. Man. It should be out flying, really. Mm -hmm. Right, so. That's where my mate Ian will be today, flying, bet you. Instead of building his puppeteer. Mm -hmm. Interesting detention, sunshine detention. Right. Okay, so in effect, that is it. You see the edges. So now is it right? So that is it. right. The other little thing I've noticed. I, I do this because mainly I'm really hate doing inches and things. So obviously you can see with the marks. I don't mean you'll see it on it, but I've marked out the pinholes. So what I tend to do now is well for the hinges. Just I know where they go. So you just put that in there. You cut it for them. That's because I've already made the aileron hinges, so so they're in there. Then I cut, so you, they'll know where to go when you put them in. All right, so that's that. And that, so I turn it back around. Right, the other thing as well. What's the matter subject? Because I've got to remember everything. So notice I've got the strings in. What I'll do now is I'll cover the other wing, right? The other side, bottom of the wing. And then what I tend to do is I feed. I cut the. Oh yes, you can see all that bit. So if we turn that round. Right, and we'll seal this, just this part of the wing, mainly because that's where the servo is going to sit, yeah? So you want a bit of a grip there, that'll do it, that's more than enough. You've already pre-drilled your holes here for the servos, and then what I do now is I actually fit my servo in, both sides, run the wires through, yeah, because it's a damn sight easier obviously to run your wires with the top wing uncovered. Run them through, connect that and make sure that the servo all works before you do the top covering. And at least that way it saves you the effort afterwards okay so that's basically that's basically how you cover the wing you know but like I said don't I mean it's up to you if you want to risk it and you think differently and you think that it's fine to cover it as it is but I tend to find even with any type of covering if you start tensioning this side it pulls the wing a bit so I always leave it until I've loosely covered everything like I've done the edges both sides and then once I've got it all there you then like cover uh, seal this wing first this side then do the other side we'll do it gradually it depends how you feel okay but once you've got both coverings on you see it's taut, taut enough to hold the frame together if that makes sense and then you can carry on with making it all nice and taut like for when you got to fly it okay so that's about that all right so I will now proceed to do the other side and we will carry on regardless right I hope that helps people like Martin and, and Ian especially my Ian bless him uh, all right, and that's how we crack on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's the wing covered. Okay, so there you can see it's all done, top and bottom. And I thought I'd do the ailerons, so they're in now. But they're not glued in because I'm going to take them off to spray them. And then underneath, as you can see, like I said in the previous video, I left a bit in the middle because that's going to have a metal plate over it, so that won't matter. Servers are in, all checked, ready to go. 
so that'd be nice <coughs> and uh so all it needs now okay uh you notice there's holes here well them two holes okay are the inspection holes that are on the one that the sock with puppets that uh, warden and this little square right i made this a rough one this uh, uh, what are we doing i'm gonna cover it spray it they sit in there like so the inspection hole just like on the one at Shuttleworth so there's four of them obviously two on each wing and that way you see once it's in it's done so this top is going to be sprayed brown like the colour scheme at the uh, Shuttleworth collection top wings brown on both sides and then top and bottom so that'll be brown the top wing will be brown underneath's left this flesh colour or whatever antique white as they call it I don't do that so I'm quite chuffed really to be honest Okay, so I'm going to try and do this with uh, on a stand, and I'm sorry if you don't get everything in it, but it's, I haven't got any one at home, I can't do it with one hand. So I'm just putting on the side of the uh, wing. I've obviously done the bottom of the fuselage wing, fuselage, on the bottom of the fuse first. And uh, how I manage that is, is that I've, I've cut it, so it's, well, you'll see it on this video, but you never know. See how I've left it, so I've cut a nice line under there, so it tracks to the same width as the, the longer on at the bottom of the fuse. Okay, so you've got to put a clamp on there basically just to get it into position roughly so you can find your hole where your rod's coming out and on here at the back you, you once you've got it into that position and you see this little bit here so I, I'm not going to really talk much I'm just going to go for it right and see if we can get away with it but you never know and I'll explain as I go okay right so that's there right so there's a lot of fettling around but like I've said so many times everyone's got their own way of doing these things and now I've got mine, so okay, so it's there now, right? Now, personally, there's not enough under there, so that I've, you can cut this away because I put a piece overlapped it under there when I put the, the stabiliser, there you go, in on. Alright, so we're just, so what you're doing is just cutting all your angles quickly, like that, at the back, so you've got folds where you need them. Okay, and then you get your iron and you just quickly tack it on there, tack it on the wall bit first. Okay, you don't go all of it over, just the back bit there. So it's nice and in. You'll see why. Alright, you got that in nice there. Then you just go back under the wing, under the stabilizer. Right, so. right, you got that. Now, the same as I might add, you do it in all the things, same as the tail and uh, everything else. You just tack it on the end. Just roughly, just quickly, up to a point there, so yeah. Just on the edges there, like so. And then you go back over just where the longer run frame runs on the fuse. And at the top you can see there you've cut a piece that's nice. So you sit it again, you just you only want to run it, just cut it on the edge. Just on the edge up there. Okay. I'll come to this bit in a minute and tip it over there like so. You need to get that on there. Right. You can see that bit there just quickly. So you go. Maybe that long along if you really want, but that's it. Right, one right, more. Right. And then you do the same there, just go along the top to there. Now, here's the trick. Make sure your lance is sharp, so it's important. Yeah, no, no. So you're cutting that away. And then you check to see how tight your lance is. Right, you don't need that anymore, obviously, because it's so there. Right, now here's the trick. What I tend to do, as long as it's sealed and just, I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you do this, it's got to be sealed tight there. Okay. Obviously, I haven't got a minute of time again, yet again, on the video, so I'll try my best to do it as quick as possible. All right. See, there you go. Let's just cut it up there. All you're doing in here is making yourself a, this is why you need a sharp, sharp blade. And you run it along. It doesn't matter if it's not neat on this bit, because it's not going to be synced. But you need a bit of a lip. See, that's all crap there, but I don't know. So there's your lip. Right. So now you've got a lip there, you just iron it over onto the top of the strut on the, the main bit on the fuse, the longer one, whatever they call it. I'm not bloody, I don't mind it. See, you iron that down nice and flat. So that gives it a bit of strength when you go to stretch it. Same with that bit, just put it over, it doesn't matter. So that's going to be covered separately, as you can see. Right, that's that bit, right? Now here. This is where it gets nicely, not easy. Mm. So you just run it over, quickly run it over. Again, 
as long as you get it reasonably okay here. This bit's getting to be covered with metal, so it doesn't really matter. So you just get your edges like so. Right. The crux of the matter is, is when I come to it, you will see this piece I'm doing now is vital that you get that to stuck down where the dirt, I don't even see it, but I'll try and show you in a minute, right. I'll show you this, right. This is where you really, in fact, <laughs> spot the bloody blade. What's going on with that? There you go, right. Right. It's important to get this right, you've got to try and follow that. Again, it doesn't really matter because it's going. Right, that's okay there, right. None of this, you don't need any of this, so let's, let's cut it away. So fold that over. Get it nice and tight. Okay. But this is the important bit now. Where you've stained it, if you're doing it the same way as me, you've got to get that stuck on there before you do anything. Right, it's important to get the top part done like that. Nice. Okay, it's all in nice. It's not gonna pop away. Right, it don't matter about that bit because it's right. Now you get a sharp blade, and I just hope my blade's sharp enough. And you follow it down the line of the. You can, you can come up, you can see it come. Right. That's it. Can you see the blade's not sharp enough? Right, now the reason you can't do it, you can't go back over that now. You do that end bit, but you can't, because it sh might shrink away and you don't want that. So you just cut it on there. Now it really matter if it's not dead dead straight like that's straight enough for me, but you're gonna put a little piece of beading across there anyway, like on the real plane. So that, you, but it's nice to have it like that. You know what I mean, if it makes sense. Right, you've got that. Now you get to this bit. I'm really doing this for Ria Macintosh blessing because he's lost a bit of heart in doing this at the moment. So it's a bit sad. Right. <clears throat> try and get back into it so but like I said if you do get fed up with a plane just leave it yeah until you get back round to it there's no, do, no good doing it half-heartedly because it'll just make mistakes and then you curse yourself more after this it's just like a, that's how I see it in a way so you can see a lot of this on the video and obviously you just do the same it's the same process mainly on and on all the surfaces of the plane you know you just track it a little bit I've got to show on all of the This is just seen in the back of it. Oh, pardon me. Right. Get it back on. Oh, don't touch anything. Really can if you want, but I will Right. Now here's a little trick. You get, right, you get your scissors. And to do it at the same width, get a nice cut. To get it, right, you, you want the same sort of width as the wrong one nearest to it. You put the bottom end of this here, the bottom side of the blade, and you run it along the bottom of the longer run. Okay, in a nice bit, that's why you need chop scissors obviously. Just run it all the way to the end. And that will give you a nice straight edge to overlap underneath so it looks nice and neat, you know. And then it basically fold it over like that, just quickly fold it over. Just to get a nice feel. Because you're going to turn the plane upside down get a nice tight fit we just see how it looks for you so, the edge okay that's that that's on okay that's that you got that you can tie it up we'll cut that off this will probably take hours to download as usual right, right. okay and that's just talking about there right. so you got it i right, got that right so far so good. Now we come to this bit. But like I said, again, you need to get this sealed. But before, so we can do that now, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got a nice edge on it, you can do all that, it doesn't really matter. Because most of this here is going to be up to about there, it's going to be a piece of steel. So, let's get that on there, right. Okay. So this is just 
had this jump to it. Right. Anyway, you could do it two ways, you could go like this, cut it all that, cut it that, right? Access crap. Nice trim there to get it from there. And then you go in at an angle. Normally I would turn this around, just cut this to the edge, not right to it. But just, uh, and then there, uh, the excess off there. Okay. Now what I try and do is I'll turn the plane, make sure it's still in the camera, which it probably won't be, but you never know. Is it? Still in, yeah, just about. Okay, and then what you do is you just get a bit of strength and fold it over like so. Same with that bit. And then might have so try and do it so you can see it. So it's just basically lapping it over, pull it over, nice and tight like so. Because obviously you're not going to see this when the wind goes on. Normally I wouldn't do it this way because I'm not, I am left angled, but okay, that's a difficult part. Okay, that's there. Okay. okay, and then just find it in there. Right. And then it can go down there. Just gives it a bit more strength, no one's going to see it. It's all out of the way, nice and tight, right. Come to that bit in right. And that bit there, quick trim it. Okay. Okay, that's that basically. Same with that there, just cut it and trim it. Doesn't matter, there's nothing going there, no one's going to see any of that. being covered that. Right, so that's that bit. Okay? Then the last bit, the most bits everyone loves doing, or I do anyway, is to get nice and tight. There's all loose. Okay, and then what you do is, just get your gun over it, just gently go over it. Fuse side done. Right. Drum tight. Okay, so that's that. And then I uh, bear with me. The idea is I'm trying to copy. I'll try and move this whole thing. Actually, it's a fuse is like that. If I can keep your eye on it, if you can see because of the light. Well, I'll put my finger, you see? Hence it runs across there. And I don't know if you can see there's, there's a bit of beading that goes across the top and at the back. Of there now this obviously is brown this wings are not green or olive drab They're actually brown the shuttleworth one is anyway so my next stage will be obviously to cover the top so whether I do that today or not I don't know but it's exactly the same process when you get to this rib bit here along there you do what I showed you under there you get the run of the scissors and you run it the length the width even of that longer run up to there you've already covered all this it doesn't matter about going to the back because this top bit is going to be sprayed brown anyway, as is the top of the stabiliser and the fin, yeah. All this is going to be brown. And then there's a piece of beading that goes across here, there, and on the front where the metal runs. So that's that kind of thing. Okay, I couldn't resist it, yeah, so I thought I'd show you is it covered. There's the top part. So it's just basically how I said, you know, you get it on there, it's nice and even down the sides. Because this bit here is going to have to be masked off, which is, uh, some people have suggested I use actual sellotape because it doesn't bleed through because of the fabric when you spray it. Oh, but my friends give me this frog tape, which is supposed to be the best thing since sliced bread. So I'm going by that because I, I used normal mask tape for my, my quarter scale and it bled through in little bits and was really pissed about that. So, but there you go, so that's that bit. And then I just fought for a laugh, I put the old pilot in for a crack and he's not sitting, he's just loose. And uh, Dean Farr's machine gun that he did for me. So, I'm going to spray that up black, get that all fitted in so it looks right on it. Oh, I love that, that looks the right part. It's spot on, Dean. Brilliant stuff. Amazing what you could do with a 3D printer these days. So, that'll be all set in place, sprayed up. And then it's the tinning of this, which I'm like dreading because I've never done that before with tin. So, I might take that suggestion that some chap put on about going to get the proper thin alley stuff. Because the beer can's a ripple, which is alright for the bottom bit because that's what it looks like. But on the tire, it's quite smooth. As you can see on the picture there, if you can see it, you see it's all nice and smooth. So we'll give that a blast and see how we go. But it's going to look pretty cool. 
I'm quite chuffed with it now. I really am. It's getting there. And then obviously the elevator in that. Um, these on the Shuttleworth one are not nothing like the world, what the normal people chaps do, you know. These are red, white and blue all over. Same with the elevators. So I've got a plan for that. So that should be fine. In fact, I think you can see it on there, see? See, there. Red, white and blue up the top and bottom. And it's the same with the rudder bit. So, see, there's the rudder there. So you've got to like uh, keep it as close as I can to it. So there you go. Okay, that's all covered. I've decided to cheat and use the uh, Solatex instead of um, uh, the normal covering, even though it's nice and shiny. But if you look at the real plane, so if I get that there and pick up there below it, you see, that's how hard to do that. Is. <laughs> but that's as close as I can get to it with the, the colours that Solatex give you. <coughs> so that'll do it, it's just there, innit? And to tell. So that'll be that, and it obviously sits on there, like so. Once it's all sprayed, I'll try and get it back. So it's getting there. See? I remember that. And, that, and that'll do that. That's them. Thank for that, he says. I've got enough of them. So that'll do that. So the next stage is to cover the top wing now, because that's what I've got to do. So Ian can uh, work out how he's going to put the middle bit in, which is right there. Which will be fun, I believe me. All right, so that's that. Okay. Woohoo! There, that's that done. I'm quite pleased with them. Right then. Okay, chaps, cheerio. Those magnificent men, those magnificent men.